Welcome to Joey's Tech and in this video we are going to be solving a problem from the lead code website Longest Turbulent Subarray. Like its name this problem will create a little turbulence in the mind while you try to solve it but like I say if your foundation is strong then solving it is going to be not that difficult. You are about to add a fabulous dynamic programming problem in your bag so stay tuned to the video and watch it till the end. The solution that I am going to tell you passed all the test cases in lead code and it took only 3 milliseconds. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then do hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon because that way you will get to know whenever I release a new video in the future. Now without further delay, I invite you to the section where I explain the problem statement to you. You have an integer array out of which you need to find the longest turbulent subarray. So below is the array which we are going to work upon in this video. A turbulent subarray is a subarray in which the comparison sign turns opposite between each contiguous pair of integers in the subarray. Here is an example of a turbulent subarray for you. You can see that the comparison sign flips between the integers. Out of the array given above, we have to find the longest such subarray that is turbulent in nature. Let's begin solving it and see how the dynamic programming technique unfolds the solution in a magical manner. I have put down the array in here and beneath it I have created an array of the same size. I will first fill the cell indexed by 0 and the value I will populate is 1. Because if I only had one element 9 in the array, then I would have given the answer as 1. Moving on to the next cell, I see that the value in the problem array is 4 at index 1. So I will compare it with the value in the previous cell. What's the value here? It's 9. So 4 is less than 9. Now the next comparison will be between 4 and the value in the next cell. What's the value here? It is 2. So 4 is greater than 2. So my equation becomes 9 greater than 4 greater than 2. Tell me, is it a turbulent subarray? No. This signifies that the subarray that started from the previous cell has to stop here and a new subarray may begin from here. What I do in this case is that I put 1 in this cell 2. This question is related to maximum subarray problem. I have already created a video on it. If you haven't watched it, then you can do so by clicking on the card in the top right corner of the screen. Let's move ahead. I am at index 2. The value is 2 here. Let me compare it against the value in the previous cell, which is 4. So 2 is less than 4. Let me now compare 2 against the value in the next cell, that is 10. Here, 2 is also less than 10. Now the equation becomes 4 is greater than 2 and 2 is less than 10. This makes a turbulent subarray. I know that this equation gives me a turbulent subarray, so I am going to add 1 to the result of the previous subproblem because I have got one more candidate here, which is 2. Like I told you, while populating the value in the previous subproblem, that a new turbulent subarray may start from here, and that is what has happened. I have got the second element of the subarray that started from 4. If you are a little confused, then you can rewatch this section or keep watching as I am going to explain more subproblems. I move to the cell represented by index 3. Let's do the comparison and write the equation. The value in the problem array represented by index 3 is 10. So we are going to compare 10 with 2 and 10 with 7. The equation that we are going to get is 10 is greater than 2 and 10 is greater than 7. Again a turbulent subarray you can see. So we got another candidate in the form of 10. What I'll do now I add 1 to the value of the previous subproblem and I populate the result in this cell which is 3. Let's move ahead to this cell indexed by 4. The value in the problem array at index 4 is 7. I'm going to compare 7 with 10 and 7 with 8. The equation that is going to emerge out of this comparison will be 
10 is greater than 7 and uh, 7 is less than 8. You can see I have got another turbulent subarray and 7 is uh, another candidate to the existing turbulent subarray that has been running on that started from 4. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to add 1 to this value, which is 3, which is the value of the previous sub problem. And uh, I'm going to populate the result in this cell, which is going to be 4. Now I'm going to move to this cell index to by 5. The value in the problem array is 8. I'm going to compare 8 with 7 and 8 with 8. Let's write the equation directly. So it will be 7 less than 8 and 8 is equal to 8. Now there is no provision given in the question for an equal to sign. So I'm going to assume that uh, a new sub array may begin from here. What I'm going to do in that case, I am going to populate 1 in this cell and move ahead to this cell indexed by 6. Over here, the value is 8. I'm going to compare 8 with 8 and 8 with 1. The equation that is going to come out of this comparison will be 8 equals to 8 and 8 is greater than 1. You can see it is not a turbulent subarray. That means, again, I'm going to do the assumption that a new subarray or a new turbulent subarray starts from here. What I do in this case, I'm going to populate 1 in this cell and I'm going to move on to this cell indexed by 7. Here the value is 1. Let's do the comparison of 1 with 8 and 1 with 9. The equation that is going to come out will be 8 is greater than 1 and 1 is less than 9. See this is a turbulent subarray. That means 1 is a candidate of the turbulent subarray that started from here. What I do in this case, I add 1 to the value of the previous subproblem, which is 1. So 1 plus 1 is going to give me 2 and I put 2 in this cell. And that's it. My algorithm is going to stop here at this cell. Because if you consider uh, this cell indexed by 8, then you see that this is the end of the array. There is no integer in the front to compare with. So the algorithm has to stop here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to populate 0 in this last cell of the solution array just for the sake of completing the entire solution array or you can say for the sake of filling the entire solution array. I will traverse the array now and find the maximum value that is 4. The number 4 means that till this integer there are 4 integers forming the longest turbulent subarray. But let me ask you, are there really only 4 integers? Obviously not. There are indeed 5 integers because a comparison sign can fit always between 2 integers. So 5 is the length of the longest turbulent subarray and that is our solution. You will find my GitHub link to the Java solution of this problem in the description box. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the longest turbulent subarray problem from lead code. I look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms only for this video. Goodbye and take very good care of yourself.